Hey everyone, it's Raj from 3CB Performance. Kings guard De'Aaron Fox rolled his ankle inwards inversion on November 11th during a 5v5 half-court practice drill, limping off without being able to bear any weight on the ankle. He was immediately taken for x-rays, which showed no fractures, and the team eventually diagnosed him with a quote, grade 3 inversion sprain. The team has set the dreaded indefinite return timetable, with De'Aaron telling us that he'll be reevaluated in three weeks and then playing it by ear depending on the results. In this video, I'll detail the collective factors that help determine Fox's grade 3 diagnosis. They may not be as black and white as you think, and shed light on De'Aaron's hazy return to play RTP timeline by breaking down the three most likely scenarios. An inversion inwards ankle sprain stresses two lateral outer ankle ligaments, the anterior talofibular ligament, ATFL, and calcaneal fibular ligament, CFL. Ankle sprains are classified into three grades with increasing severity, mild grade one tear, moderate grade two tear, and a severe grade three complete tear. However, these grades aren't cut and dry because diagnosing ankle sprains is an inexact science. For example, the research shows that taking an MRI, which is typically the gold standard for many soft tissue injuries, is accurate only 79% of the time when it comes to diagnosing a complete tear of the ATFL, whereas it's 95% accurate for an ACL or meniscus tear. Accordingly, the diagnosis of an ankle sprain severity relies on multiple indicators, or as I call them, quote, drops in a bucket. The collective factors for Fox's grade 3 sprain include, we know that De'Aaron was unable to bear any weight on the ankle after the injury occurred. Findings during Fox's manual exam most likely included extreme point tenderness, severe hemorrhaging, bruising, a decrease in total ankle range of motion greater than 10 degrees, swelling in edema measured greater than 2 centimeters, a positive anterior drawer test, which indicates involvement of the ATFL ligament, and a positive Taylor tilt test, which indicates involvement of the CFL. Imaging would include an MRI and stress radiograph, which is an x-ray taken while a member of the medical staff performs the anterior drawer test I mentioned before. If the latter shows gapping of the ankle mortise less than 3 centimeters, the injury is termed a grade 3A tear, whereas if the gapping is greater than 3 centimeters, the injury is termed a grade 3B tear. This distinction is important because there's research showing that a grade 3A, on average, takes 15 days less to come back from compared to a grade 3B. Based on De'Aaron's 3-week post-injury reevaluation date, my educated guess is that he has a 3A tear. Speaking of reevaluations and return to play timelines, Fox's reevaluation in early December will consist of re examining the previous factors and, very importantly, evaluating for overall ankle stability by taking them through the STAR Excursion Balance Test, SEBT, which evaluates side to side proprioception, dynamic postural control, strength, and mobility. Guarding against ankle instability is a critical piece of ankle sprain return to play because if left unchecked, it could lead to Fox developing chronic instability, CAI, which comes with a whole slew of long-term problems including persistent pain, discomfort, swelling, loss of ankle range of motion, decreased function, and feelings of instability and fear of movement or re-injury, known as kinesiophobia. The results from the reevaluation will dictate Fox's return to play timeline. Here are the three most likely scenarios. If De'Aaron's ankle pain and discomfort has decreased significantly and the testing goes well with minimal signs of instability, he'd likely be cleared for the return to play protocol and begin ramping up activity. If everything progresses as expected, I'd expect around a 10 day ramp up period for a total return to play timeline of roughly four and a half weeks. If De'Aaron is still experiencing moderate pain and shows some signs of instability, the team could wait until the six week mark and then reevaluate. If at that point the pain and instability continue to persist, the research says a lateral ankle ligament reconstruction is then indicated.
If Fox has severe pain and numerous signs of instability at the three week reevaluation and or he also has an osteochondral defect or OCD, which is when the force of the ankle sprain chips off a piece of the cartilage in the ankle joint, the team could decide to pull the plug and have surgery immediately. That being said, the orthopedic surgeon I consult with on surgery related topics told me that this would be a very aggressive approach and the least likely to happen. He said that unless there's a large OCD lesion, it's very unlikely the Kings medical staff wouldn't give Fox until at least the six week mark for another reassessment and then decide his fate. Even if the reevaluation goes swimmingly, there's one common setback that could manifest during Fox's rehab and delay his timeline, a quote, bone bruise. These usually don't show up on imaging until weeks after the initial twist and only on MRI to boot and will only pop up on the rehab team's radar after the athlete feels persistent pain in the ankle after ramping up weight bearing activity. A prime example of this is former Lakers guard Lonzo Ball, who suffered a grade 3 inversion sprain last season on January 20th, 2018, was tracking very well to be back in roughly 5-6 to six weeks, but then, after having prolonged pain following treadmill running, had a follow-up MRI that showed a bone bruise in his ankle. These can last for a while, and to that point, Zoe wasn't cleared for full on-court activities until nearly 7 months after his initial injury. The research definitively shows that the biggest risk after an ankle sprain is another ankle sprain. To combat that, the medical team will continue to incorporate proprioceptive training into Fox's training plan. And very likely would use an external support such as a lace-up brace or a taping. Both proprioceptive training and external supports have been shown repeatedly to reduce ankle sprain re-injury risk. However, I always recommend only using external supports for the short term because it changes ankle and foot mechanics, leads to dependency, and results in mild decreases in athletic performance. All in all, De'Aaron faces an uncertain return timeline after his grade 3 sprain. Depending on the reevaluation and ramp up process, he could be back as soon as four to four and a half weeks, to missing six to eight weeks, to needing surgery and being out for the entire season. That variance is an inherent and unfortunate reality for the player, team, and fans alike. That's a wrap for this video. Thanks for watching. My goal is to provide you with in depth, evidence based, narrative free analysis. You can always find me on IG and Twitter at 3CB Performance. Make sure to sub to the channel for the latest updates. 3CB out.